Hi, I'm Jenny Brown. Welcome to this week's MFB News. I hope your first week into 2023 has been so incredibly kind to you, actually, and I hope you've been keeping very, very well. Also, this week, it's going to be a relatively quick video. There hasn't been a huge amount of um, industry news. Um, there's been quite a few changes from lenders that I'm going to go into in probably more detail than I would ordinarily, just because some of them are really positive, and I'm really looking forward to sharing them with you. Um, but beyond that, in terms of the broader market, there's been no house price updates, no landlord surveys, no legislative changes that I want to report. So um, it's going to be short and sweet. Um, thank you to those of you who are um, kind of contacting me with regards to the um, sort of getting back possession of the property that I rent out. Um, it's really nice, actually. You guys know for, so much more about the kind of process that I'm going through, or some of you do, than I do. Um, so your advice is, is really appreciated, actually. Um, in terms of the update on where we are with that, so I've served a section eight on my um, tenants. The kind of two week notice period on that ends on Thursday of this week, so tomorrow. Um, so then we kind of move into the next phase. Um, if I'm really honest with you, I'm finding the solicitor I'm dealing with um, fairly uncommunicative. <laughs> um, so I emailed them on Tuesday saying, oh, um, the section eight runs out on Thursday, not heard anything. I think it's unlikely the tenants are going to, um, you know, bring any money to the table or kind of try and sort things out what happens now no response um so uh, it's going to be a surprise on thursday i guess what happens next but i'll keep you updated so next week's video um i imagine we're going to kind of be moving on to the next phase of the process whatever that might be so i will keep you posted then okay so what's been happening in the mortgage market in the last week so um first of all let's talk a bit about what's going on with swap rates so swap rates were hovering before christmas at around 3.7 over the Christmas period, they kind of eat their way up to around 4%. Um, this is largely um, linked to what's been happening with Japan and their interest rates. We don't need to go into that in too much detail. But the thing that you're really interested in is that um, they've been easing back down since Christmas. So as of um, 11.30 last night, five-year swap rates were at 3.785. So definitely going down in the right direction. And that's really positive because swap rates are really what drive um, the rate of fixed rate mortgages on the market. So um, seeing these going down in a kind of downward trajectory is a, only a positive thing for all of us. Now, another thing that I think it's just worth um, talking about briefly is the um, sort of commodity prices actually on the market. So um, what's really interesting is that um, oil and gas are both um, cheaper now to buy on the um, commodity markets, um, cheaper now than they were one year ago before the invasion on Ukraine started. So what this means is actually the cost of these has come right off the boil. And if you look at the kind of graphs where you can track these things over here, there have been some really enormous spikes in terms of um, the cost. Um, but this has come right down. So the really good news is that now that the cost of these two key things have come right down, it should really put the brakes on inflation. Um, putting the brakes on inflation means the Bank of England are going to feel less pressured to keep pushing up Bank of England base rate. Um, for those of us on variable rates and trackers, obviously that's going to be very, very welcome news. But also that means that that's going to really kind of dumb things down, calm the economy, which is going to give the um, markets more confidence for the longer term view, which is going to have a good impact on swap rates. So actually, um, it's a really positive story for the time being, which is wonderful. Now, in terms of what we've seen in the last week from lenders, so these guys have come back to market with some, I say gusto, I don't know if that's probably overcooking it slightly, but there has been some really positive changes. So the first um, one I wanted to report is that Aldermore have made some rate reductions. Now they haven't really moved their pricing um, since the mini budget back in September. So they pushed all their rates up afterwards and haven't brought them back down again. So what they've done is they've released um, a series of products. The one that I think is most interesting um, is the one which relates to their multi-property application. So what Aldermore do, which is relatively unique in the market, is they will do one mortgage secured against multiple properties. Most lenders want one mortgage per property. Um, some clients, um, borrowers, really, really like this arrangement. Why do they like it? Well, first of all, um, they like it because it's one application, one set of legal fees, one arrangement fee, um, one set of paperwork, um, both in terms of mortgage application, but also in terms of monitoring, monitoring things going forwards. Um, the other thing that some people really like is that when lenders are assessing the rental calculation across the whole portfolio of properties you're taking to them, they're just saying, well, this is the overall loan amount and this is the overall rent. So one kind of balances out the other. And this can work really well if you've got some high yielding properties in your portfolio, but also some low yielding properties as well. They can kind of serve to balance each other out. 
The downside of these is that um, I think people always assume that if you um, sell one property, you'd be expected to pay off the mortgage on a kind of pro rata basis. So um, if the property sold for £100,000, people would be thinking, well, okay, I've probably got to give the lender back 75000 or 50000 something like that. But actually, the lender can ask for the full proceeds back. So then you don't. it's not an automatic given that you would get um, the kind of difference between you know, the pro rata mortgage amount, the loan to value, and the sale price, you might have to give the whole sale price back to the lender, so you wouldn't actually end up with any cash in your pocket, which might be absolutely fine, depending on what your plans are, um, but actually that can be a real problem for some people as well. Um, so look, pros and cons of these, but great to see Audemars dropping their pricing. So in terms of the kind of numbers which we're really interested in, um, variable rates on these start from 5.88%, uh, um, fixed rates are starting from 6.19%. Um, the loan to value here is 75%. Now the other products that um, Audemars have bought out, um, the pricing is, you know, it's not wonderful actually. So um, variable rates from 598, um, fixed rates from kind of 6.49%. So nothing to get too excited about there, um, but really good to they've brought their pricing down. Obviously any downward step from lenders at the moment is a really good sign for the broader market. Audemars, really fantastic lender. Um, in terms of their more niche um, USPs, as it were, they'll lend to um, people with an unlimited number of properties in the background. There's no minimum income requirement. Um, SPVs, trading companies, layered companies, um, day one remortgages. Um, they can accept some of the more kind of um, uh, quirky property types, ex local authority flats, studios, those kinds of things. So really great lender. We really do like Audemars. So it's fantastic to see them kind of strain the hat back into the ring with some more competitive rates. Now the other um, rate release that we've had in the last week, which I've been most excited about, has come from the Yorkshire Building Society. Now Yorkshire um, are a really fantastic lender. They're kind of the commercial, um, well you have Accord Mortgages who are part of the Yorkshire Building Society who do their kind of standard buy-to-lets and then you have Yorkshire Building Society um, commercial who do limited company buy-to-lets and then proper commercial transactions as well. Now, these guys have released a series of products for buy-to-lets, holiday-lets, HMOs, and also semi-commercial. Now, it's the um, the first thing I should say here is on their buy-to-lets, well, they're only lend to limited companies, right? So, um, limited company rates, five-year fixes from 4.99% with a 2% fee, which is really, really fantastic. Um, very, very good. Now, the reason this is even more exciting than just that is that Yorkshire are um, a commercial lender that do buy to lets. So they have the ability to really um, wrap their heads around slightly more complicated um, share ownership structures, um, really large portfolios. Um, you know, the amount of debt they can get to um, is massive. Um, so looking to take on really chunky deals. Their minimum loan amount on these rates is 500,000 pounds. So buy to let rates um, for limited companies from a five year fix from 4.99. They bought out an HMO rate, um, five year fix from 5.55. Um, they've also bought out a semi-commercial rate, um, which actually is um, very competitive, for five-year fix from 6.25% as well. So really, really wonderful to see the Yorkshire bringing out some competitive rates. We've seen Keystone reprice. Keystone have now have rates from 5.84%. Um, Keystone, again, specialist lender. So multi-unit blocks of up to 15 units, HMOs of up to 15 bedrooms. Um, also really good with first time landlords doing um, HMOs as well, that's another real USP of theirs. So smaller HMOs um, you can have it as a first time landlord, so well done at Keystone. Land Bay have also bought out some special edition rates. Um, special edition basically means there's a fixed amount of money available to lend on a given interest rate. Um, so a, a tranche of funds would be the technical term that we would use for this. Once those funds have used up, the rate has simply withdrawn. So they now have um, five-year fixed rates starting from 5.09%. Um, there is a kind of warning notice on these and some of these other very low interest rates. You'll see it um, very low, comparatively low to the rest of the market. Um, so just watch the arrangement fees. Um, some of these very low interest rates also have very, very high arrangement fees. I'm going to say how I'm talking 5% of the loan amounts and do when you're speaking to um, lenders and brokers, um, do ask the question about how much the arrangement fee is because you might be in for a nasty surprise. Lastly, we've seen Virgin bring out um, a really lovely 10 year fixed rate. Um, pricing here is from 4.69%. Now, what's interesting is the kind of trend at the moment in terms of what we're seeing clients asking for is two year fixes and variable. 
but actually a 10 year fix at 4.69 to my mind in the particularly in the current climate is stunning can you imagine just knowing 4.69 for the next 10 years you don't have to worry about it so i thought this was really good now with virgin they are a lender who is looking to lend only to individuals so no limited companies you can have a maximum number of 10 buy to lets in the background they do need you to have income of £25,000 a year and that cannot be from rental income so if you're a landlord you need to have money coming in from a different source to the tune of £25,000. Um, some things that they're great at they do first time landlords they do let to buyers so that would be if you're going to rent out the house in which you're living and you need the buy to let mortgage for that and then you're going to be buying a new house to live in. Um, sounds straightforward not every lender does these actually because there's a certain amount of regulation or additional regulation that sits around this kind of lending. Um, another thing they're great at, they do early remortgages, so a remortgage where you have owned the property for less than six months. So actually, in terms of their um, offering, I would say that it's a very, very sort of standard um, high street offering, but they just happen to have a really good 10-year fixed rate at the moment. So to round this all off, where are we with pricing? So at the moment, if we're looking at straightforward standard vanilla cases, so personal borrower, borrowing a standard property, um, variable rates are starting from 3.59%. Now, what I'm going to say here is that this rate, um, this, the bottom one, is a base rate um, tracker. So it's linked directly to base rates. So any increase in base that came in in December has already been f factored in. If you are looking at variable rates at the moment, do just be careful about what it's tracking and when it last moved. Um, some lenders don't necessarily amend their variable rates if they're not linked directly to Bank of England base rate straight away, which means that actually base rate moves up the lender doesn't do anything until maybe the start of the following month and then they push their rates up and people get a bit of a nasty surprise because they assume that any movement would have happened at the same time as base rate moving. That's not the case. These For a lot of mortgage rates, unless the wording says linked to bank of and base rates or tracking bank of and base rate, the two are not inextricably linked. Um, so the lender can choose to move the interest rate at any given time should they so wish. So variable rates from 3.59, two-year fixes from 4.29 and five-year fixes from 4.69. Moving on to limited companies, um, variable rates from 3.99, um, two-year fixes from 4.89% and five years from 4.99. What's really interesting is that the um, difference in pricing between um, limited company and personal borrowing is very, very low at the moment. So looking at five-year fixed rates, there's really 0.3% in it, which is barely nothing at all. So really um, interesting to see the margins constrict so strongly at the moment. Um, in terms of where we're expecting things to go, we are expecting to see more lenders drop pricing in the coming week or so. Um, and then we think actually that's probably largely the market done for any great changes um, moving into February. Again, there might be some shuffling around as we approach the Bank of England base rate meeting. Um, but actually, largely, we're expecting rates to stay pretty much where they are, maybe a slight reduction and then stay there for at least the next really six months. And that is everything for me this week. Thank you, as always, for watching. I hope you found that useful. I'm hoping to be come back with lots of positive news next week, both with regards to lots of new shiny mortgage rates and also um, with regards to the um, repossession of my buy to let property as well. Um, yeah, I could be uh, slightly optimistic there. But anyway, so look, have a wonderful week. Um, if you do have any questions, please do give us a call. 0345 345 6788. We'll have a look at our website. Um, have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, keep warm, keep well, and I'll see you next time.